Today I'm joined by the one and only Mr. John Lyons. So today we're going to be discussing um, distressed properties um, and what that means okay, for end users and possibly for agents as well to try and educate the market a little bit. First of all, can you elaborate a little bit what is a distressed property and how is it different from other type of uh, properties out in the market? So it's a, it's a pretty ambiguous term, a distressed property, and it's a good question. What does it really mean? I think it means different things to different people. My definition of a distressed transaction, which is a seller who really wants to sell and needs to sell. And I think it's when you add the term or when you add the, yeah, when you add the term needing to sell into that statement, that's when it becomes a distressed transaction. So for example, if a property is highly leveraged and there's the opportunity potentially to close the deal below the, the, the debt level that is against the property with the bank and the banker may be willing to engage in that process and if that price is also below maybe by 10 or 15 percent recent transactions of the same type of property then I would say that is defined as a distressed transaction because there's a real desire to sell there's a real need to sell and you're obviously getting it at a price that is lower than the recent comparables. In terms of purchasing a distressed property, what different ways can you purchase it? Well, you can purchase it with cash or finance, same as any other property. I mean, a distressed property is just a good deal, but there is a level of urgency on a distressed property that will always mean that the seller will favor the cash buyer. So cash buyers can transact more quickly than mortgage buyers. So there's always an inherent advantage to the cash buyer for a distressed property. That's sort of applying for a mortgage. How, how long does that process take? Process can take a different length of time depending on your profile, but it can be very quick. You can get a mortgage very quickly, but we would always say that a cash buyer can transact within a couple of weeks, within a week, um, whereas a mortgage buyer could take eight weeks. So obviously if urgency is important to the seller, they're going to rather transact with a cash buyer if there is an old, if there is a cash buyer there to do the deal. Could you elaborate what would be the pros and cons of uh, buying a distressed property? I think obviously it comes back to this definition of what is a distressed property, but let's say a distressed property again is just a very good deal and it's being sold by someone who really needs to sell it. And usually that means they need to sell it quickly. So a risk that you have to make sure you avoid is being pushed into a situation where you've got to make a decision more quickly than your due diligence process will allow. It's very important that even as good as the opportunity might look, that you as a buyer still really fully understand what is the opportunity and does it tick the necessary boxes for your requirement. And don't be in a situation where you let the deal get in the way of good decision making. When an end user would say, to an agent, look, I, I've lost my job, I need to be up and out of the country. And would you then consider that as a sort of distress sale and then try and push the price down? If we understand that someone needs to sell the property quickly, we will advise them to price it aggressively because yeah. it's only those aggressively priced properties that are going to sell. That doesn't mean to say we're asking them to drop the price to levels that are only interesting to the cash investor in the market. That's not the case. You don't have to go 20% below the market to get the deal done and any broker that is suggesting that's what you've got to do is probably not giving you the right advice. So John would you say it's necessary to get a private valuation done on the property? It's not necessary if you're a cash buyer um, unless you want to satisfy your own curiosity and do some due diligence that you feel comfortable that you know what that property's worth and it's got somewhat independently objective valuation attached to it. Um, but if you're a mortgage buyer, the mortgage will only be issued on the purchase price or the valuation, whichever is the lowest. So for that reason, it does make sense to get a valuation done. And it's part of the process anyway. So you have to get the valuation done if you're a mortgage buyer. But it makes sense to also put some um, to put some conditions in your plot in your contract of, of sale of purchase, sorry, that means that you're not tied into that deal if the valuation comes in way lower than what you've agreed to pay for the property. Um, Is there any laws around sort of minimum uh, price bracket for certain communities to sort of protect the overall price? 
um, or about our community? Yeah, there's not anything that stops you from transacting at a level that is agreed between the buyer and the seller, but there is the difficulty that can be encountered when you get to the land department. So we've actually had an example relatively recently where we sold a property in Victory Heights for 3.2 million. And when we went to the land department, they, they had on their records that the valuation for that type of property should have been closer to 3.7 million. But because there wasn't many transactions happening in that narrow area of the market, their valuation was actually his historic and it hadn't really taken into consideration the fact that the market changed since then. So what happened in that situation is there was a negotiation with the land department that took place and eventually the deal went through with a valuation of 3.4 million for the purposes of paying the, the Dubai land department fee, the 4% transaction fee. It didn't change the price of the transaction, it just changed the, the price of the 4% transaction fee. And that was applied to the 3.4 million price that was agreed at the land department, not the 3.2 million transaction price. Um, John, anything you would like to close off by saying? Um, I'll say thank you to Bayou for having me on. Thank you, Chris. Thank You're you to well. everyone at Bayou. Um, Bayou have done a great job during, um, during this crisis. I had a very good conversation with yourself, with FIBA, um, with your CEO, Hyder, and I found that you've been a very supportive company, so thank you for that. And also, pleased to say that the deals that we have been transacting throughout this crisis, some of those leads have come from Bayut, so it's, uh, it's positive news, and it's good to continue to get, um, get good inquiries coming through the Bayut platform. So thank you very much for coming on, John. We appreciate your time and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon, mate. Okay? Thank you for having me. Cheers, Chris.